Okay, this is a challenging one then. Um, last week we looked at vertebral bones um, and I said that we would next look at the muscles of the back. So I've got lots of different models that show lots of different bits of the back. The trick is that there are an awful lot of bits of the back and lots of layers. So as a student, your difficulty is, oh my, how do I untangle all of this? How do I work out what's what? How do I manage all of these structures and understand what they do and where they are and stuff like that? I mean, I imagine that a lot of students just kind of look at the back and give up. Um, so what we'll do is we'll break it down into chunks, into layers, and it will make sense, right? Um, but the other trick I've got is, do I have enough things to show the things that I want to talk about? Don't know, they take up a lot of space. Well, I've got, got a skeleton here. All right, can't even fit him in. <laughs> but I've got him here. I've got Wee Man over here. So we'll rotate around and see what we can do. All right, okay. The muscles of the back then. See, look, see this model here, um, on this side we see the superficial muscles of the back. So we can see trapezius up here, uh, and we can see latissimus dorsi. All of these muscles of the back that are very, very superficial. You can see the spinous processes um, covered by the nuchal ligament here. We were talking about the spinous processes of the vertebrae last week, and you can palpate these on your own back, can't you? Um, and these superficial muscles are actually moving the upper limb, really. So we talked about those when we were talking about the shoulder and the upper limb. So that, this is the most, this is the superficial layer of muscles of the back. Today, we can ignore them. These are also known as a layer of extrinsic muscles of the back. So trapezius, latissimus dorsi, the rhomboids, all these guys, they, they're gone in that first layer of the superficial muscles of the back. In the next layer are the intermediate group, and there are only a couple of muscles here, right? So do you see this? This is serratus posterior inferior. Hopefully you remember serratus anterior as the boxer's muscle. The serratus anterior muscle is passing from the ribs, gives you all those fingers, those slips of muscle that you see in, on the sides of superheroes' massive chests. And these pull round to the scapula, and they pull the scapula anteriorly, right, which gives you that reach, gives the boxer some of the power of their punch. So that's serratus anterior. That's not a muscle of the back, that's a muscle of the shoulder of the upper limb. But this is why this is called serratus anterior, because this is serratus posterior, and this is serratus posterior inferior. Serratus because it's serrated, serrated because it's attaching to the ribs, and it's going down to the vertebrae here. We're going to ignore these muscles today as well. We talked about these muscles when we talked about respiration. So serratus posterior inferior braces the ribs, and it'll pull the ribs down, <gasps> helping with expiration, right? And if there's a serratus posterior inferior, then there must be a serratus posterior superior. And there is, it's up here. We can't see it. Um, but these are the intermediate layers. So serratus posterior superior, they're up here somewhere underneath the rhomboids and they're elevating the ribs and also bracing the ribs. That's the intermediate group of muscles of the back. Also extrinsic muscles of the back. Also something we're gonna to ignore today. And then we get down to the intrinsic muscles of the back also known as the deep muscles of the back. This is the deep group or the deep layer. And they're these muscles that you can see here. Now, we need to think about what the function of these muscles is. If these other muscles we've been talking about are moving the upper limb and bracing the ribs and that sort of thing, what do the deep group of muscles of the back do? What do we need our backs to do? One of the reasons there's always a skeleton in my in, in, in frame is that he's usually what I focus on, so that when I stand by him, I should be in focus. He's my focus dummy. Cheers, focus dummy. Um, okay, so what do we do with our backs then? Well, one of the big things we do is that when we're bent over, we stand up straight again. And what we're doing here is, oh, this is, um, so this would be flexion of the back this way. 
and then to stand up again this would be extension of the vertebral column or extension of the back right so these deep muscles of the back I mean for one thing they're working eccentrically to lower us like this and then they're contracting and working concentrically to extend the back and you can extend further as well right can't you something else we can do is of course we can flex laterally and yes we, we're also using the muscles of our core here there are other muscles involved just as there are pretty much in any move when we make there are other muscles involved but the muscles of the back will also give some lateral flexion and maybe a little bit of rotation but you know you can do these movements and you can feel all these other muscles and deep muscles like quadratus lumborum all these other things these are also laterally flexing the back and they're probably more powerful at it but the muscles of the deep group of the back can also do a bit of lateral flexion but their main job is extension right and this group of muscles then if we look at if this is the the series of spinous processes here which you can feel you can feel lateral to that on either side a good chunk of muscle right and it kind of it bulges out around here and that's the deep group that we're talking about and there are lots and lots of muscles here and this is where students can get lost but when you when you do that and when you extend the back you can feel those muscles you can feel that bulge of muscles running up your back and that bulge of muscles if you group all of those muscles together we call those erector spiny all right so we've got a lot of muscles in there lots of different muscles lots of different groups which we'll talk about in a minute but if we group all of those muscles together all of that deep group of intrinsic muscles of the back we call them erector spiny and erector spiny's main job then is extension of the vertebral column when you're bent over it'll also lower you you know you know what i'm talking about that's erector spiny these are the muscles we're interested in today what we need to do what we need to do next then is is look at the groups within that group <laughs> within that group don't give up stay with me it's not so bad okay um who should we look at uh, uh, should i look at wee man you can see why he's wee man right because he's he's wee he's little so this is the erector spinny muscle group here there's serratus posterior inferior so imagine that's not there imagine that's been removed these are all the superficial muscles forget them it's this bulge here now we've got three layers of muscles and we can think of those three these three groups of muscles from medial to lateral and the most medial group of muscles are called spinalis or spinalis and the spinalis muscles or spinalis spinalis sounds nicer doesn't it it's just spine spinalis the spinalis muscles then are the most medial and for them to be the most medial then they're going to have to run between the spinous processes of the vertebrae so you can see how those muscles running between the spinous processes can help with extension of the back so that's spinalis then we have longissimus so long muscles and the long muscles are then a little bit more laterally and these are running between the transverse processes of vertebrae okay and then we have iliocostalis now iliocostalis you can break down ilio ilium so the iliocostalis muscles are coming from you can see these guys here they're coming from the iliac crest and the sacrum and they're running up to the ribs costal right up to the ribs up here look you can see here how they're running out to the ribs so we have spinalis most medially then lingamit longissimus and then iliocostalis those are your three groups and that's almost it um, but you have to think about we have we have groups of muscles kind of running across a number of vertebrae all right so they're not attached to the vertebrae next to them they're running across a few vertebrae so we've got lots of groups of muscles overlapping and running up the length of the vertebral column so we then group those muscles by whatever region they're in lumborum if they're in the lumbar region thoracis if they're in the thoracic region and cervices if they're in the neck and if they go to the the head and head is caput right um, so if they go to the head then they get called capitis 
So we've got spinalis longissimus iliocostalis. Here we can see these iliocostalis muscles, so these would be iliocostalis thoracis muscles. Do you see what I mean? Now, not all of these layers extend the full length of the vertebral column. The longissimus group, for example, don't really go down into the lumbar region, so they don't have a lumborum section. Um, so we have longissimus thoracis, longissimus cervicis. And that's almost it, that's almost the whole picture. Well, spoilers, there's more, <laughs> but not for today's video. Um, but we've also got some other models up, uh, some other muscles up in the up in the head. As I said, capitis, which go up to the head, right? Okay, so now up in the neck, we can see this muscle here, and this is another muscle of the back, and it's part of that intrinsic group, that um, deep layer, if you consider superficial, intermediate, and deep layers. Um, now, do you remember when we were looking at um, the half section of head? and we looked at the splenium part of the corpus callosum, right? And I said splenium was a rolled up bandage. Well, for some reason, these muscles get called rolled up bandages as well. Why they? I... Anyway, this is a bandage muscle, splenius, and it's going to the head, so it's capitis. And can you see? It's going to the mastoid process here, and you can feel your mastoid, you've got your ear here, right? And you can feel your mastoid process here. Big lump of muscle, pretty important anatomical landmark, and that's where splenius capitis is going to. So you can imagine that splenius capitis, or in fact there's another muscle as well actually, deep to it. It's under here, and we can't see it, but there's also uh, splenius cervicis. So another splenius muscle, but cervicis or cervicis, because it's just going between cervical vertebrae. You, uh, this little gap that we're looking through here, that, that, that may well be it. Well, it's under there somewhere. And it's running between the vertebrae at about the T3 to T4 level, um, up to about C1. So it's covering this region here, right? Um, and then we have splenius capitis here, which is running from, again, C6, C7, C1, C2, C3, kind of down here, maybe a little bit higher. And then that's running up to the mastoid process of the head. So you can imagine then that these, this going laterally is going to help with rotation of the neck and head. But also like other, like erector spiny muscles, it's also extending, if they work together on both sides, right? It's going to extend the neck as part of that extension of the back. Does that make sense? Plus trapezius, plus a whole bunch of other muscles. They're all, they're all acting together as they always do, but that's what those muscles do. Okay, so how's that? Last week, we looked at the vertebrae, so you know all about the spinous processes and the transverse processes, and the laminae and the pedicles and things like that. And today we've talked about many of the deep muscles of the back, of the superficial, intermediate, and deep muscles. We've talked about the deep muscles of the back and how those attach to the vertebrae and work together as erector spiny to extend the back. The other muscles we talk about in the upper limb, as I said. Now, hopefully, the back doesn't seem too terrifying or too complicated to you anymore even if it did in the first place. There is a lot going on here, but just think about those functional units. But unfortunately, there is more. Well, this has got a block that comes out. Mm -hmm. um, so there are also, there's an even deeper layer of the muscles of the back. Now you might read different descriptions in different textbooks that group these, these groups of muscles differently. Don't worry about that. We, um, we do like to, describe things in different ways. But while I was talking about um, erector spinny being part of the deep muscles of the back, which is one way of describing them, uh, and being part of the intrinsic group of muscles of the back, there's an even deeper layer of muscles called the transversospinal muscles. And these guys are really, really deep, and they run between the processes of pretty much adjacent vertebrae. And they do a whole bunch of other things. These guys are involved in back pain, back spasms, that sort of thing. Hold that thought, 
we'll come back to those guys next week. Do it chunk by chunk by chunk. And then you'll understand the anatomy of the musculature or the musculoskeletal mature of the back. All right? <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah, there is a lot here. <laughs>